Hey guys, this video is going to be about weak acid strong base titrations. An acid base titration is an experiment that depends on its intention. So how you set up the titration will change depending on what your main goal is. All right, so the picture over here on the right shows the simplest way and you're, this is probably what you're most familiar with. And so with the experiment that I'm talking about in this video, you would have the base most likely in the burette. And so you would be titrating a weak acid in the solution until the solution turned pink, at which time that means that you've met the stoichiometric endpoint. So at that point, the moles of the base and the moles of the acid are equal to each other. So if you didn't know the concentration in the flask, the unknown molarity, um, you would know how many moles were in the flask when you reach the endpoint because you'd be able to tell how many moles of base you've added based on the molarity of the base and the volume of the base that you've added to it. And so then you'd be able to calculate the molarity. Um, and hopefully you've all done that. This is the most straightforward way to do a titration. Another method that we use is pH monitoring. And so this is the burette. It just looks a little less scientific. Um, and we're basically dropping the base into the solution and we're monitoring the pH as we do that. And so as we add base, we monitor the pH and we end up getting a curve that looks like that. So every little drop of base that we add, the pH slowly starts to come up. And so we're going to look at all the points along that titration curve and what those points represent throughout the titration. All right, so weak acid strong base titration curve will look something like this, right? And we're using this method to do this. And so if you look right here at the very beginning of the curve, um, it has like a little dip in it uh, that sometimes will not necessarily be shown uh, on AP questions or test questions in general. Um, because you have to put all the data in to get that point. It's not as easy to generate as it is to make that point flat. But the main thing is where you get your endpoint. And so the endpoint or the equivalence point is always going to be greater than uh, seven for a weak acid strong base titration. We're going to look at why. All right, so points of interest. So right here at the very, very, very beginning, at this point, we haven't added any base. And so what I have in solution, so this would be 0.1. What I have in solution right there is just the weak acid. So we've made, there's a little bit of conjugate base, not much, and a little bit of H3O. Again, not necessarily all that much, uh, more than water, but uh, not much more. And we have a, a pretty low pH because of that that amount of H3O. All right, and then we start adding base to it. And once we start adding base and we get out of this little dip area and we are in this area, this is called the buffer region. So in that region, we are making a buffer and that is because we're adding base to acid and so the weak acid is reacting with the base as completely as possible and it's making conjugate base. So since we've generated enough conjugate base here and we have the weak acid still left over in solution because um, we haven't reacted all of it because there's more weak acid left, so we haven't added enough hydroxide to react it all yet, then that means we've created a buffer here, right? Because we have a weak acid and it's conjugate base in solution, right? And then the next point I wanna talk about is the half equivalence point. So the equivalence point here is occurring at 100 milliliters, right? Um, this buffer region is two. All right, but the point that I wanna talk about is the halfway equivalence point. So that would be at 50 milliliters. So it's this particular point right here in yellow. All right, so that point um, is the pKa. You may or may not know that, um, but What's happening is 
let's say we have uh, two moles of HA in the beginning. And we're going to add enough hydroxide to get to the halfway point. So that would be one mole because that would react half of the acid. That means that what we have generated is, so we didn't have any of this beginning, so we'd get one mole of this and we'd have one mole of this left over. So if we look at the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, this value right here is one and this value right here is one. So then we have the log of one and that's zero. And so since that point is zero, right there at the halfway point, because the conjugate acid and base are equal, the pH is equal to the pKa at that point only. And so that is why uh, we can find the pKa of an acid by finding its half equivalence point. All right, so this was point three. Okay, and then point four is the equivalence point. So I wanna talk just for a second about why it's basic, so it's above seven. All right, so we've added hydroxide to our weak acid and we've added enough to where all of the weak acid and all of the hydroxide are reacted so it's just the exact right amount well what we have is we have the weak base and in solution the weak base will take a hydrogen from the water and create a little bit of hydroxide now it's not much because it's not a very great base um, but it's enough to make the pH higher than seven. All right, so another way to think about it is you've generated a bunch of conjugate base, so it's gonna be slightly basic. Okay, now one thing that I do wanna point out on all these is what is in solution. So at the beginning, what we have in solution mostly is HA because they're weak acids, they don't dissociate very much, and so we can consider that we have mostly HA in solution. During the buffer period, we have this mostly in solution. And then at the equivalence point, we have mostly this in solution. There is none of this left. All right. And then past the equivalence point, the very last point that I want to talk about, so five and on, so this is point four, we have extra hydroxide that we've added. So we've managed to react all of the weak acid, but we're still adding base because we want to get a good curve so we can actually find the equivalence point. So that means that we don't have any of this left. And so we have excess strong base and we still have all the conjugate base that would be made from the acid. So that's what you have it the most of in the solution. And really the only thing you care about is the excess base because it's going to overpower any weak base uh, in solution anyways. All right, so this is basically a summary of everything that I talked about. So uh, remember this point, you may or may not see it. Um, the equivalence point is here and the pKa is always gonna be so if the equivalence point happens at 100, the half equivalence point will happen at 50 and it will be the pH at that volume on the line. All right, and then this is your buffer region so you'll have a buffer there and then above the equivalence point will be excess base and your equivalence point will always be greater than seven when you have a weak acid and you're titrating a strong base and that's basically it